Well, hi, everybody. This is Don Stewart. We want to complete the second half of what we started last time, and that is we talked about please avoid saying that a word in Hebrew or Greek means such and such. And by the way, you're probably wondering what this means here. Doulas Yesu Christu, servant of Jesus Christ. I have some of my shirts. The When I recorded lesson two or episode two for um, uh, God wants to know the future, I had Zetata in it. That means seek. So I do that, but I'll interpret it for you. Okay. All right, let's pick up where we left off. We talked about words only mean what they mean in a context. There's no individual meaning for any word. It only means what it means when it's surrounded by other words to put it in a context. Now, in this short, short, we're going to make this one shorter than the last shorter. We'll have a, a long instead of a short. A common misconception, a common misconception is that each English word, each Greek word has one corresponding English word to it. Okay, this is a very popular misconception. For example, all right, some of you are familiar with uh, certain Greek words the meaning the word logos, L-O-G-O-S, logos. What does this Greek word mean? And if I asked you the question, you probably heard it before. And some people would say, well, it means word. You know, it's in John 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. It means word. Well, that's not really correct. In fact, the King James Version uses 24 different English words to translate this one Greek word, 24 English words in different contexts to translate the word logos, includes such terms as account, doctrine, fame, rumor, say, speech, thing, and talk. The word logos can mean that in particular contexts. It depends on the context. Now, if we want to add the New American Standard Bible and the English Standard Version, how they translate logos, there's 30 additional English meanings that are used. Such words as answer, book, complaint, news, message, and story. So when we put the three translations together, there's over 50 different English words translating this one Greek word logos, logos, depending upon what? The context, okay? Same as word is true in Hebrew. Now, last time we mentioned about the word tov. Uh, many of you might have learned that. Uh, you go to Israel, you learn boker tov. Good morning. Tov means good, doesn't it? Genesis 131, God created everything. It says tov ma'ov. Very good, right? So it means good. Well, it's often defined that way, but the Hebrew word tov is translated in the King James Version by over, by well, actually exactly 41 different English words, again, depending upon the context. Now let's turn this around. <clears throat> the same English word does not always translate the same Hebrew or Greek word as we look at it this way. Let's go to the King James Version again. The word destroy in the King James Version does not merely translate the same Hebrew word over and over again. In fact, when you come across the word destroy in the King James Version, the Old Testament, it represents only one of 40, four zero different Hebrew words that can be translated with the English word destroy. So again, we need to understand this. A word does not have a single meaning. It can mean many things. Now, another misconception is that there's only one English word that's needed to translate each Greek word. We hear that. Well, and we're going to talk about this. And we have, again, this is from question four in our book, Bible Translations. Uh, we talk about in the same section there about interlinear translations. In interlinear, it's got the Greek here, then a, um, underneath an English word that corresponds more or less to the Greek word. Well, we hear it often, well, this Greek word means, and you give a one-word English word in translation. Well, again, it doesn't work that way. For example, Matthew uh, 119, uh, the Greek word infinitive, a form of the verb paradigmatizo, it takes six English words to translate this one word, to put to an open shame. That's what it means in English, but in Greek, it's only one word. It's an infinitive of this uh, particular verb. And again, sometimes words need to be replaced with entire phrases. For example, I'll give you another example. Mark 14, 52, the Greek word prosabaton is used, but we don't have a single English word to translate this. So it means the day before the Sabbath. Five English words are needed to translate this one Greek word. So obviously, to properly translate it, more than one word is needed. Lydia, the seller of purple cloth. Remember her in the book of Acts? She's a female. Um, the, the Greek word used in 
Acts 16, 14 means a female seller of purple cloth. The one word uh, that's used, porf, porphyopolis in, in Greek, means a female seller of purple cloth. There's not one word in English that, that does the job. So again, you need an entire phrase here. So this is self-evident uh, here in the context of um, these passages. In fact, one of the books I, I read, this is a real interesting story here. I got it when I was a new Christian, basically about 50 years ago. And I've always had it with me, but it's very technical. And I, I, I think I was in some raffle and I won it and I just kept it. But it's a very technical book on languages and that by two Wycliffe Bible translators, John Beekman and John Callow. Now it's doing great work for me because I'm, I'm loving it. But anyway, they make the point too, in various languages, they say a direct word for word equivalence is impossible because of the differences between languages. In 1 Peter 1.18, the King James refers to your vain conversation, quote, received by tradition from your fathers. The last six words, received by tradition from your fathers, is the translation of only one Greek word, patro paradatu. There's no English equivalent there. So what you need is a number of words to translate the English, uh, the Greek word here, number of English words. So we can't emphasize this enough. There's many times in scripture one, where one word in English won't do to bring the meaning of the Greek word across. So we have to use multiple words. Now, Having said this, let's conclude with this thought. Words cannot mean anything and everything. They do have their limitations. We talked about the last time. The dictionary meaning of the word is not what the word means. It's what the word can mean in certain contexts. And again, words do indeed have their limitations. And so uh, we need to understand that. And so we want to say the word likely means or has the idea of something or so-and-so, and that's okay. That's fine. But uh, the point is we don't want to say this word means that or this word has to mean this. It does not have to. Context, context, context. Okay, we're out of time here again. I'm Don Stewart. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like us, to uh, get that little click there and uh, join us if you haven't already done that and uh, uh, subscribe and tell others about us. Until next time. We'll see you then. May the Lord richly, richly bless.